Good morning, Philippines. So, have you ever been falsely accused? Well, I don't think any of us can go through life without it happening occasionally. People carry with them all our prejudices and insecurities and are quick to make judgments that don't really fall into the line of bearing false witness against your neighbor. So that's going to happen. And a recent event triggered a past memory of mine when I came back from uh, Ontario to British Columbia and I was looking for work and the first job that showed up was at Bank of America. Not my first choice, obviously. I enjoyed construction and working with my hands more than having to use my brain back then anyway. So I, uh, I took the job. It was a commission uh, sales, uh, a currency exchange for Bank of America at Vancouver International Airport. And uh, <clears throat> what it brought to me as a challenge too because uh, I like the, uh, the mental uh, exercise as well. And uh, although it was kind of a mundane chore of converting one currency to the other, uh, it was the sales end of it that interested me. Most of the people in that position are clerks that sit at the desk. And if you're on commission sales, you got to have some motivation. So uh, I remember one particular incident where uh, there was a sort of a, a schedule or of the flights that arrived both in and out of Vancouver at the time. Excuse me, there's a noisy taxi going by. Um, and uh, yeah, 6 p.m. on Fridays was heavy for British Airways flying to Heathrow. So there's a lot of pounds in the drawer at that time. And, and then uh, in the mornings, you'd get the flights from Hong Kong into Vancouver. Some can even call it Hong Coover now because there's been such a flight of uh, Hong Kong residents since 1999 that came to North America and a lot of them settled in, uh, in and around Vancouver. But uh, yeah, when the flight would land, typically, uh, no fault to the Chinese, they're on a tour guide or whatever and they've been instructed what, what to do. And uh, they would quite often come and ask for five dollars uh, U.S. converted to Canadians or similar to um, just get a, a bus ride or from the airport to downtown. So uh, yeah, the uh, question came up: Why not convert more and uh, more commission for me? So when the, I noticed that when the first guy came up and asked for five dollars, a whole plane load of them would come by and ask for five dollars. So I made a point when the first one came around and he said uh, five dollars a US or five dollars Canadian, I think it was Canadian at the time, I said uh, fifty dollars in a very aggressive tone and he, he I waited, and of course, whoever speaks first loses, right? So it's fifty dollars, yes, sir. So I converted fifty dollars U.S. So essentially, I got ten times the volume in that whole lineup because what the first guy did, they all did. I remember him turning around. And the guy said five dollars. He said no oh, fifty. So he he confirmed it to the next guy, and it went down down the line. So. Needless to say, some of my tactics and approaches weren't uh, appreciated by some of the other clerks, especially when we compared our paychecks. And there was one particular girl, a uh, Japanese-American, who didn't really like me at all. Um, I think she at some point told me a story that her mother or grandmother got raped by it a U.S. serviceman in Japan, and she had a bitter anger ever since. Well, regardless, what happened was, I was talking about the $5 for the bus fare earlier. Um, they would leave my booth and go buy a bus ticket to, get to go to downtown Vancouver. And one guy came by and he said he, was, he got a ride from a friend. He didn't need his ticket. And he passed it on to me as a tip. I said, thanks, whatever. 
And the next guy that showed up in line, he asked me where he could catch the bus. I told him upstairs, if, but if you need a ticket, here's one for you. And I sold it to him for at the face value of $5. And he went away and I forgot about that. And then this is where all hell broke loose. Because the uh, Transport Canada controls the whole airport and who is licensed to do what. And no, uh, I wasn't licensed to sell bus tickets, but I didn't see it as that. I just saw it as a leftover ticket. But uh, Transport Canada had a whole different view of that. And well, the guy came charging down and demanded that I give the guy his money back so he could sell him the ticket directly. So not thinking at the time, but the way the booths were constructed for the cashiers, there's a plate glass in front of us and there's our cash drawer that sits on the counter, but within the counter, there's a counter on the other side that the customer uh, is able to set their things down on before they pass it through the, the keyhole there. Anyway, but underneath that, it's hollow. So that's where I'd store my lunch and my, my wallet and whatever else that I had been dragging around with me. And uh, so when he asked for his uh, $5 back, I said, no problem. And I reached under the counter, took my wallet out, and I gave him his $5, gave him the ticket. And the little Japanese lady at that time happened to be cruising by, uh, all friendly-like, and uh, came in, actually came into the booth, even though it wasn't her time. But anyway, she had security clearance, so I couldn't deny her that. But uh, anyway... What she saw was she saw my hand reach in the counter, take $5 and pass to the guy and him passing me a ticket. And she had no idea where it came from, but she did a quick U-turn and went upstairs and complained to my boss, old Ernest, Ernest Hossel. I'll never forget the guy. Great guy. One of the nicest guys I ever worked for. And Ernest and I could have been great friends, but for this saga, um, so Ernest called me up and said, what was going on? I explained to him. I said, it was $5. I sorry, sold the ticket because Transport Canada went to him and complained as well. So that was on my employment record. And needless to say that they were envious uh, on my salary or my commission checks. And uh, it came around to haunt me later on when uh, there was another occasion where I was upstairs at the main office area where we dispensed at the time standing at the counter and a woman came in she started shoveling $20 American bills through the keel one at a time and uh, she counted off 200 and when I went to check there was 180 there I said no ma'am you only passed me 180 but my mistake was I was accepting the $20 bills individually on the other side of the hole as she passed them to me I should have let her count it all out in her own hand before she handed anything to me. So just let that be a warning to you if you're a cashier. Don't uh, don't have any funds transferred to you one at a time. Make sure that they, they hand you the whole packet and you hold it and you count it directly in front of them. The result was I was $20 short and this woman started making a big fuss in the lineup. Ernest was right behind me. So I said, Ernest, come over here. So what's going on? He said, well, just give her the exchange for 200 Well, she want to give me one out of 80 Give her 200 Phil. Don't give me an argument. Okay, fine. So I exchanged it. And later on, he called me upstairs. He said, Phil, he says, this work that isn't cut out for you, is it? I said, well, I'm more of an entrepreneur. That's true. He says, well, maybe it's best that we part of ways. I said, what has this got to do with uh, these accusations flying around? He says, well, there's some envy in here with the, you and your your attitude. And my attitude was I was out to make money. <laughs> but uh, some didn't agree to my approach. So I said, well, as long as we're on good terms, he said, oh, no problem. In fact, he said he had a house issue. He knew I was a contractor as well. And I went over to his house, which was right on the flight plan of the, of the uh, runway for the airport. And uh, yeah, we had a walk around, I had a chat, and no hard feelings. But there's an example of where somebody can start spreading a lie about you without your uh, 
understanding what's going on in the background, you can very easily be cutting your own throat. Now, how do you deal, how do you deal with uh, false accusations? Do you show outrage? Do you remain silent, let sleeping dogs lie? Do you follow a legal recourse? Um, you're not gonna go punch him out. I mean, you did that as a kid maybe, but you're not gonna do that, so that's off the table. So, that's what happens in life, boys and girls. You do get accused unjustly of things sometimes. And there's been other times where the accusations were far worse. And uh, fortunately, um, I learned at a very early age that the easiest thing to do is to stick with the truth. And uh, it may be a bumpy road in the short term, but in the long term, you'll be able to look yourself in the mirror and be proud of the man you are. So that's the way things sit for me. Um, maybe you've had an example of a situation where you were wrongfully accused. And maybe there's situations where somebody should have been accused, but were so intimidated, they were afraid to step forward. This is the situation that I find a lot of women are in, that they're in abusive relationships or kids that are afraid to speak up on what's been going on at home. One of the criticisms of the uh, whole COVID epidemic was that the kids were kept homes in dangerous situations where they would have been safer at school. So not every situation deserves the same answer. Um, but certainly uh, the Bank of America experience was an eye-opener for me because I simply could not in my naivety believe that somebody would be so full of hatred and envy that they would have later on target me. Now later on I, uh, I had other uh, situations but earlier on when I was at the Hudson's Bay Company I had a boss who hated me because I was English and he was French and uh, he would actually challenge me, telling me he's a black belt in karate, and that uh, he would uh, say, did I want to check his pockets before he left the, the uh, store? Like he was trying to push me towards making a judgment on him. Now, he may have been a separatist uh, freak in my view, but I never questioned the man's honesty. In the end, we parted ways there too. And uh, that's another story for another day. But if you enjoyed this little tale, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see some of you on my coming video. Do you want to say hi, honey? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.